Have you ever been in love? Do you hate life? Do you love profoundly? Do you eat chicken and rice? Do you make hummus? Are you for Israel or Palestine? Do you like or hate war? Do you ever go for walks like at midnight? <laughs> Have you ever gone to a bar and uh, you run into some people there that you don't know that well, but you think they're all right, they're pretty cool. And then the drinks start flowing and you're having drinks with them and <laughs> And uh, pretty soon you're getting kind of hammered and you start buying drinks for them and they start buying drinks for you, maybe. And then you find yourself talking about the most ridiculous things in an impassioned way. Like you're talking about like, oh my God, I can't believe how much I love my dog, man. I love my dog so much, man. And the other person is like, yeah, I have a dog, man. I have a child lab. He died, man. That's why when I drink, I drink by myself. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You know, I talk about drinking sometimes on this podcast. People are going to think I'm an alcoholic or something. <laughs> no more than you. No more than you, buddy. I'm not an alcoholic. No more than you. I have a few beers. All right. It's scary to turn on the microphone and just start talking, especially when you've been quiet for a couple of hours. What do you talk about? What do, do you ever think about what you talk about with other people or even just the dialogue in your head? If you could hook up a speaker to your brain and have you hear everything that you go over in your head, you'd realize that you repeat yourself an insane number of times. So what are the things that recur in your brain? Remarkably, something that people tell me that I talk about a lot, people being my wife, because my toddler and my nine-month-old can't really talk to me about anything <laughs> besides the stuff that they talk about, and I don't hang out with anybody. But over the past few years, let's say, people have mentioned to me from time to time they're like, Goliath, why do you pay attention to such and such thing? Like, what's the point? Like, one of my uh, dear friends, uh, he's mentioned to me that I'm like uh, the guy from La Mancha or Don Quixote, that I'm chasing windmills. <laughs> and he's not entirely wrong, but we're all chasing windmills. Especially when you consider the fact that like 90% of the things that we do, 90% of the things that we pay attention to are made up. Like money, laws, movies, culturally trending ethics, the rules that we follow in society. Time, time according to the clock is made up. The work week is made up. The moon going through its cycle throughout the month is not made up. That actually happens, as far as we know. As well as the sun going through its cycle throughout the year, that actually happens too. But the clock and the work week is totally made up. Minimum wage is made up. Business is made up. And things that are good for business are made up. And speaking about things being made up, how much of you is made up? Like, how much of you comes from some dude that wrote a script or made some movie in Hollywood and it's and you saw that movie and you decided that this is how you're supposed to be and this is how you're supposed to behave or you watch some sitcom that went on for like years and this is the kind of humor that you adopted and you know I know that we're supposed to be that we are shaped by 
uh, and influenced by people in our lives and things that we're exposed to. I get that. But how much of you comes from you, like from inside, from like the core of you? How much of you is original as much as it can be? Like you were doing the dishes and one day you woke up and you didn't do the dishes. And then one day you woke up and you decided to start doing the dishes just because you somehow mustered up the motivation to do that. And then you washed the dog and then you took a walk and then you did whatever you did. And then, and then that changed you like because of something that you actually did and not because of something that you saw or something that you were exposed to that told you that you're supposed to do this or be influenced by this. I think that the best kind of experience, uh, meaning like something that you accumulate, like wisdom experience is the kind that comes from things like that. Like when you somehow find it in yourself to muster up the motivation to do something. And that's a very difficult thing to do in today's world, especially when the first thing many people do is look at their cell phone in the morning and that right there is already directing your sails, your wind in a direction. You know, it's like your mind has already been hijacked right there from the very beginning. You know, and then you go to bed. Uh, many people go to bed and they look at their device and their information, the information on there. And that is, you know, doing the same thing at the end of the day and throughout the day. Who knows how, how often that happens? So not that that doesn't have any benefits like uh, that puts us on the same page, so to speak. But it's not organic. Like there's people, there's middlemen in there who decide what page we're all going to be on. You know, uh, an algorithm told you what you're going to see if you're not careful. But that's my question. Like how much of you is you? Like <laughs> how much of you is, is made by you? You ever think about that? I think about that shit. I think about it maybe too often. Uh, I don't think I think about it every day, but it's something that at one point I did think about every day. Like the way that you feel about cops and the way that you feel about weed and the way that you feel about women and men and races. How much of this is things that you decided that this is how you feel about it and not because everybody else is not doing it or everybody else is doing it or everybody else is thinking this kind of thing. Influence. Peer pressure is a very powerful thing if you have not discovered this self-propelling, this self-fueling aspect of uh, uh, that I'm talking about. You don't have to discover it, but I highly recommend it. As a person who's happy like 90% of the time with myself, and maybe maybe more than that, uh, people say that it's not healthy to be happy with yourself that much, but, um, I don't know. I don't listen to those people. Those people are crazy. Well, you want to be filled with self doubt. Like you, you start, uh, thinking great things about uh, other people, or you start thinking great things about yourself in your internal dialogue. And then, uh, you can't express that, right? Because too often people start wanting to create self doubt in you. But anyway, forget about that. The question, how much of you is made by you?